agree. I mean, BiPAP reps here in this. There's at least two reasons why people who are post transplant are more susceptible to skin cancers. The first is that it's thought that being immunosuppressed decreases your body's innate defenses against cancer. The second thought is that some of the medications that one is required to take to maintain the graft or the organ that's transplanted are actually carcinogenic. Post-transplant patients who develop skin cancers tend to develop more simultaneous skin malignancies and those malignancies tend to be more aggressive in behavior. If you're transplanted after the age of 50, you've probably accumulated a certain amount of sun damage that might predispose you to skin cancer. If you're transplanted at a very young age, let's say 15, when you're 35, you're still way below the average age of someone who has skin cancer, but you've been immunosuppressed for 20 years. And at that point, your risk of skin cancer is really quite high. So something that I would hate to see and that's easily preventable is for someone who's been waiting for a heart or lung transplant to finally get it, only to be felled by skin cancer, which is something that's fundamentally fairly preventable. We want to catch the precancers and treat them as soon as we can. If some precancers escape and become skin cancers, then we want to treat those as quickly as possible at the earliest stages. Our treatment plans are individualized. Someone who is young, who has not sustained a great deal of sun damage, who has no precancers or active skin cancers on our visit can probably be seen every six months to every one year. Whereas someone who has a history of skin cancer going into transplant is a little older to begin with and therefore has sustained more sun damage would be seen closer to one to three months. Some of our treatments include topical chemotherapy and we tend to use Mohs surgery to make sure that we get the best cleanest margins possible while still sparing skin and making sure that we create the smallest wound possible. We have the advantage here at Stanford HealthCare and in this clinic specifically of being able to have longer visits that I think it's difficult to implement in the community and we have the advantage of seeing a lot of post-transplant immunosuppressed individuals and knowing how quickly some of these non-melanoma skin cancers can develop. I would want to let primary care physicians and patients know they should come in and see us early. Having precancers or even, frankly, skin cancer will not prevent you from getting your transplant. Just let us get everything teed up, take care of any precancerous lesions or small skin cancers that exist at that point. Let us educate you about skin cancer prevention and then post-transplant, let us watch you carefully to make sure that these things don't become an issue.